Hey, it's 1210. Let's go ahead and start this meeting. We are officially convened uh, in this, our final meeting of our centennial year. My name is Tammy Denny, and I've had the pleasure of serving as your president this entire past year. So would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? And Steve, will keep your microphone mm -hmm. muted so that we're not all trying to compete to stay in sync. But please join me on the count of three. One, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic, 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 to and now uh, we will move into our- Tammy, hold on one sec. I'm going to mute everyone. Excuse me? Okay, Judge Mary James, you have the invocation, please. Mary needs to unmute herself. There we go. Thank you. So in Rotary, we enjoy listening to each other's experiences and those of our guests and our programs, particularly those that educate us and challenge us out of our comfort zones and stimulate us to take action, to give, to serve. We also enjoy showing up, rolling up our sleeves, getting really involved, having skin in the game. And no one has done this more enthusiastically than our president, Tammy Denny. I mean, a cowbell on her last day, that, that says something about the power of milk. How grateful are we? Even with her infectious energy, the joy of coming together to act, to join hands, to make a visible difference has been subdued. In Rotary meetings as elsewhere, we're not able to listen and react and interact in the flesh. Everything is virtual. We're observers when what we wanna do is be involved. We wanna march, yet we're dutifully on the sidelines, masked, physically apart, what to do to be part of the change we want to see. In that spirit, the words of Lutheran theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer resonated for me, and I share them with you. The first service one owes to others in a community involves listening to them. Just as our love for God begins with listening to God's word, the beginning of love for others is learning to listen to them. God's love for us is shown by the fact that God not only gives the word to us, but also lends us God's ear. We do God's work for our brothers and sisters when we learn to listen to them. Amen. Thank you, Judge Mary James. You're welcome. Lovely. All right, before we move on to our bell ringers, I want to be sure that we acknowledge our visiting Rotarians. Um, Jill Tucker, a visiting Rotarian from a current president in my class of presidents from South Salem Rotary. <coughs> and then also a visiting Rotarian uh, Mary Louise Van Atta from South. Are there any other visiting Rotarians? You can unmute yourself and quickly introduce yourself if I've missed you in the introductions. Okay, and now uh, President-elect Sue Bloom, you have a guest that you'd like to introduce. You can unmute yourself. Okay, go ahead, Sue. Oh. Uh, wait, do you want to introduce your guest? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. First off, I want to introduce my husband, Gene. He's here Hi, with Gene. me today. Um, he is the outgoing one of the two of us, and um, he's never met a stranger. He's my college sweetheart, my best friend, and husband of 38 years. So, and hopefully we make him a Rotarian soon. Uh, my daughter, Beth, is on the line. Um, Beth Afchinelli. Um, she is my oldest, our oldest child. She's the most amazing, most amazing daughter ever. Um, she's a U of O grad and she and her hubby Anthony own a graphics business and live in Bend. So I appreciate her making time to come. And then my mom, Mary Garza, we were talking about her earlier um, before we convened. My mom is a portfolio manager with Wicked Smarts, an amazing investment track record. Um, she received a Paul Harris Fellow uh, from the Santa Barbara Rotary Club for her work to make Santa Barbara Symphony more available and popular to their disadvantaged population. And finally, my stepdad, Blas Garza, he's a past president of the North Santa Barbara Rotary Club, 
He's their act, has been their activities director, which included RILA for almost 20 years and a two-time Paul Harris Fellow, and he, he's been their song leader since 1998, and I appreciate them all joining me here today. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome to all of Sue's family, and welcome to all of our visiting Rotarians. Okay, and now to our bell ringers. Allison Kelly, the floor is yours. You can unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear my sound? Yes, I can hear you. All right, so we have eight bell ringers today, and um, so thank you for all of you. And if you sent me one and you do not hear your bell ringer um, being announced, please send me a message in the chat box and we will um, make sure that that gets included. So to start us off, the first one is from Ron Kellerman. Ron Kellerman is ringing the bell twice today. The first is for Steve Martin for his informative and entertaining centennial moments during the year. If you haven't heard or seen all of them, the links are in this week's e-blast. Well done, Steve. Please ring the bell. Okay, do we have, I can't hear a bell. Is that being, who's ringing? Can you hear that? Yep, okay, got it. All right. And um, the second one is the first in a series honoring none other than our outgoing President Tammy. So outgoing, that's a double entendre right there. The second is for President Tammy. This is also from Ron Kellerman. Her leadership, sense of humor, and grace under pressure got us all through a year that will probably go down in history as our club's most challenging year. Thank you, Tammy, and may you enjoy your new role as past president. Please ring the bell. All right, and the next one is from Pam Lawson. Pam Lawson is ringing the bell five times for President Tammy Den uh, Now I'm gonna mix up pronouncing your name, Denny, our departing president for her wonderful behind the scenes jo job, helping Pam pull together the weekly e-blast. Tammy has been a great mentor, a gracious forgiver of occasional errors, and an exceptional writer of 52 upbeat president messages. Thank you, President Tammy. Please ring the bell. Awesome. All right, Barry Nelson is ringing the bell for President Tammy in her tremendous service as our centennial president. Tammy made every meeting fun and engaging, even through the pivot to online meetings. I look forward to the time that we can again be together and hear Tammy's contagious laughter in person Congratulations, President Tammy, on a phenomenal year. Please ring the bell. Yay. All right, and that takes us to Alicia Bay. Alicia would like to ring the bell for President Tammy. She says, I have appreciated the warmth and grace she has demonstrated as president of the club this year. She transitioned our club to online meetings and continued to help us feel connected through a difficult time. Thank you, President Tammy for your excellent leadership and commitment to the club. Please ring the bell. And then Tom Golden and I put our bell ringers together to make a double bell ringer in honor of President Tammy. President Tammy, you have gone above and beyond to lead dynamic meetings and set a compelling example of what being a great Rotarian looks like. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you working with you and having you as our leader. Please ring the bell. Um, and then the next one is from Jane Downing with the Center for Hope and Safety. Jane is ringing the bell for all the very kind Rotarians who helped clear blackberry bushes and weeds from the Hope Plaza property. The staff at the Center for Hope and Safety had been so busy over the last several months that the vines had become overwhelming. We are grateful to all the volunteers and their fearless leader, Adam Kohler, for their hard work to clean up the site. Please ring the bell. And the last one is from me. Um, I am ringing the bell in honor of all persons of color who may be suffering from racism and the emotional impact of such blatantly violent acts of racism as we have recently seen. I am also ringing the bell for all those who have stepped up to work in law enforcement. We know that many policymakers right now are wrestling with how best to improve practice and ensure all individual rights and that rights and liberty can be respected. 
We all know many dedicated law enforcement professionals who go above and beyond to protect vulnerable children and victims of crime. As Rotarians, as we search for justice and healing, may we see opportunities to be peacemakers. May we be committed to justice, kindness, peacemaking, and equity, celebrating all of the beautiful diversity of our global family. Please ring the bell. That's it. Okay, thank you, Allison, for all of that. I should have let Sue ring the bell for those. I had no idea that that just feels awkward, but thank you everyone. You're, I don't want you to make me cry yet. No crying. Okay, so thank you, I love you all. Now, it's time for us to move to an induction. We have an induction today. Um, Vanessa Nordyke, please introduce our new member in waiting. Thank you, President Tammy, and good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. I too have missed you all and the opportunity for in-person contact. And uh, may I just say congratulations to President Tammy. You've done a wonderful job. And uh, thank you also, Allison, for your bell ringer in particular. I appreciate its timeliness and agree with it completely. So it's now my distinct honor to welcome my friend and introduce you to our newest inductee into the Rotary Club of Salem, David Souter. David is an old but new Salemite. Not to be confused with his cousin, David H. Souter, the former U.S. Supreme Court Justice from New Hampshire. David attended Liberty Elementary, Judson Middle School, and Sprague High School right here in Salem. Just before his senior year of high school, he moved to San Diego and was forced to attend Mission Bay High School a mile from the beach, a whole mile, people, uh, before uh, becoming accustomed to the sunshine. Tough duty it was indeed. Uh, David stayed in San Diego County for 30 of the next 35 years or so before moving back to Salem in 2017 to be nearer to his mother, who was having some health issues, and to switch careers. David opened his Prudential Financial Advisory Office here in Salem with some amazing foresight, opening on March 1, 2020 into the COVID-19 pandemic and closing again on March 15, 2020. Prior to working as a financial advisor with Prudential, David acted as an equity analyst for two hedge fund managers, scouring the country for stock ideas, interviewing CEOs and CFOs. He was the president of Kingsland Capital, a small and mid-cap equity hedge fund for four years, and also ran a broker dealer for a broker dealership for a year. David has also worked as an investment banker and an institutional salesman selling into mutual fund managers and hedge funds. David has a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from UC San Diego, 1987, and an MBA from Yale University, 1992, and achieved the Chartered Financial Analyst designation in 1999. He played varsity tennis for UC San Diego during his years there. Still an avid tennis player, he also enjoys golf and hiking in his free time. David is extremely excited to be joining Rotary Club of Salem and getting the opportunity to become more involved in volunteering and making a difference in our local community. I'm so proud to have David here because I know as a Rotarian the incredible work that uh, all of our Rotarians have done over the years and I feel he, is an, he will be an asset to our club. David is a member of the Salem Chamber of Commerce, the Salem Kaiser Business Alliance, and volunteers for Salem for Refugees and Salem Leadership Foundation. He also occasionally writes a column for the Salem Business Journal called Heard About Town. His mother, Catherine A. Souter, was quite active in the local community until a few years ago as a former president of the local Seroptometist chapter and a volunteer with numerous local nonprofits. Please join me in welcoming David Souter. Okay, thank you, Vanessa, for introducing David into membership for our club. Involving people who will continue to build this great club and giving them a place to belong is a top priority. To show our appreciation, the club will award you, Vanessa, 250 Paul Harris points towards your next fellowship. David, through your membership in Rotary, you can build lifelong friendships and join forces with like-minded people around the world who desire to make a difference in their communities. Our club is comprised of leaders who embrace our motto, service above self. As Rotarians, we have pledged to uphold the highest ethical standards, 
subscribe to the object of Rotary and live by the four-way test. Regular attendance at our meetings is an important part of your membership, but Rotary is so much more than just a club. As you become more involved, you'll begin to understand the power of Rotary through expanded friendships and involvement in your choice of many committees and fellowship activities. As you build friendships and contribute to our impact here and around the world, you will truly understand what it means to be a member of this club and the 1.2 million Rotarians worldwide. We are a vibrant action-oriented club and as such, we know you will roll up your sleeve and get involved. Therefore, David, as the newest member of our club, do you pledge to uphold the four-way test, to serve on at least two committees, and to contribute to the club in every way that you can? I do. I do. That's an excellent answer, David. And fellow <laughs> Rotarians, do you pledge to warmly welcome David into our club and to offer him your full support in all that we do? We do. Yes, excellent. Excellent answer, club. Please welcome David as the newest member of the Rotary Club of Salem. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David. Welcome. Okay, Thanks. and now let's see. It's time for us to acknowledge some of our red badge holders. Lauren Gutierrez, it's yours. Hi, all. Lauren Gutierrez from Salem Health Hospitals and Clinics here with some of our new Red Badgers. Um, before I introduce you to two of our Red Badgers, I would love to give some credit to a few Red Badgers who have officially made their journey into Blue Badge world. Um, I wanted to make sure that Tammy got to see a few of these people before she headed out. Um, so Trisha Frazell, whose um, hair sponsor was Cindy Lanisar. Stephen Goto, who was uh, brought in with, by Mark Wolf, and Sherry Patterson, I know Sherry is not able to join us today, was brought to us by Sue Bloom, but wanted to give that shout out as Sue's coming in. Um, and Scott Mischke as well, who I believe is not on. So we've got four people who will be given their real blue badges as soon as we're back in person. Um, so today we have two uh, red badgers, Trevor Phillips and Kelsey Balde, who will answer the questions everyone else has answered. they give their name, their title and organization, their favorite place to travel, the name and location of their high school, and one fact that most people don't know about them. So Trevor, kick it off for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Tammy and fellow Rotarians. So uh, my name is Trevor Phillips. Um, and my professional title and organization is that I'm a board certified emergency room doctor and a partner of the Salem Emergency Physician Services, known as SEPS, which has staffed the Salem Hospital ER for over 40 years. My non-clinical uh, duties include serving as chair of the Salem uh, Hospital Pharmacy and Therapeutics Committee, and then recently I became a uh, counselor elect for Ward 3, uh, City of Salem. Um, my favorite place to travel with family is the Redwood Forest. Um, and uh, my high school is the, the Knights, uh, the North Valley Knights near uh, Merlin, Oregon, just north of Grants Pass. And then one fact that people don't know about me, most people don't know, is that uh, one of my many hobbies is include studying martial arts. Um, in high school, I got my green belt in Kung Fu, and two years ago, I got my black belt in Kempo here at uh, South uh, Salem American Schools of Shaolin Kempo. And next up will be uh, Kelsey. Awesome, thank you. Um, I am Kelsey Balde. I do marketing, uh, events, and community outreach for Doty Pruitt Wilson CPAs in downtown Salem. I, um, let's see here, favorite place to travel is Lake Tahoe. I'm fortunate enough to have grandparents that live there, so I get to go there quite often. I am a 2004 graduate from Sprague High School here in Salem. And one thing a lot of people don't know about me is um, I am a classically trained opera singer. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, Lauren, did you have any other remarks? Nope, I just wanted to say thanks. Welcome again, if anybody has any input on the process. I'd love to hear it. Um, and other than that, um, mm -hmm. if you're a Red Badger and still want to greet, please do come come greet with us. I think this is a great opportunity to get to know some of our, some of our new members. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelsey and Trevor, for greeting us today and giving us a little bit more insight as to who you are. So we have an opera singer and a black belt. So nobody mess with Trevor. <laughs> okay. Thank you both very much. 
Uh, and thank you, Lauren, for organizing. And welcome to all of the red badgers who are now blue badgers. Yay for you. Um, we want to now um, shift gears and we will go into our program. And today's program is the installation of our new board. So my farewell and Sue Bloom's welcome. So um, turning it over to our program chair, uh, Mr. Chuck Swank, our very own treasurer, whom we love and appreciate with all of our hearts. So Chuck, it's yours, sir. Thank you, Tammy. Am I on? You are. I'm, okay, and this computer works. Yay! I'm thrilled. Yay! Um, Sue drafted me into this. Thanks, Sue. <laughs> but we'll give it a good shot. Uh, it's also a novel, not only the 100th year, but who would think we're doing an installation looking at a screen? I know. It's too much. I agree. Uh, as we end the Rotary Year, oh, first I'm supposed to introduce the table. Um, both of you. First, Tammy Demi, Demi, whatever, uh, outgoing president. We've had the privilege of seeing her in person for eight months, I guess, and on our screens for four more. So, Danny, Tammy Denny, and Sue Bloom, incoming president, um, executive officer of the Boys and Girls Club, lady I've known for a long time, and we certainly welcome her. Uh, although you got a tough role to follow, got to follow Tammy. Okay, so I'm supposed to introduce President Tammy. I think I just did it. Um, like I said, she's been a wonderful support, uh, helped me a lot as we went through the do's, doing again all by telephones and emails. She has been absolutely wonderful about helping me through this process. I have one request of all of you, I'm going off script. Please go in and check your information on DACDB. Your life changes and DACDB doesn't change just because your life does. So thank you very much. Um, Tammy, we yes. all get to have you tell us about a very interesting year. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you everyone for being here today. We have a total of 72 participants in our club meeting today. And I know we're here virtually, but it is um, heartfelt to see your faces and to know that you've taken time from your, from your day, uh, even working remotely or those of you who are at, away from your homes and working in your physical environments. We do appreciate all that you're doing um, and all of the effort that is um, undertaken to keep our communities going. So these are my parting remarks and um, they're written with love and heartfelt gratitude. Wow, this year's flown by just as the previous presidents told me it would. It's been my honor to serve as president in this our centennial year and what a year it has been. We celebrated in grand style earlier this calendar year where we welcomed our district governor and honored Jerry Frank the namesake for our amphitheater. The birthday celebration was organized by our very own past district governor, Renee Campbell. Past presidents whom we see infrequently were able to join us for this great celebration. The annual fundraiser was the culmination of our three-year commitment to the amphitheater fundraising with all the paddle raise proceeds being directed to the Centennial Project for our, that will be a gift to our community. The 2020 Good Works event was a record, record breaker. Thank you to the committee, sponsors, and donors who made the event a tremendous success. As you know, Rotary Connects the World was the RI theme for 2019 and 20. Throughout this year, we connected to students, speakers, and fellow Rotarians from our community, from other states, and from around the globe. That connection was made most evident when the club allowed me to participate in the Rotary International Convention in Hamburg, Germany. It was an amazing opportunity to interact with Rotarians from around the world. Thank you, club, for sending me to that wonderful experience. And for those of you club members who do not have a challenge coin with this year's theme on it, I do have several remaining. We did give these throughout the year to our speakers. So if you, and to our student speakers, so if you would like one of these challenge coins, just let me know. I'd be glad to put your name on one. 
Prior to assuming the gavel, I served as the chair for the district conference and two years as the co-chair of our Good Works event. The preparation for every president of our club is to serve as the chair of the program committee. And every president will agree this is a major undertaking, but one that is made possible with the commitment of longtime committee members who bring their continuity and passion for engaging programs to, every ta to the table every month. Thank you. It was a great year for sure, but I would not have been able to say yes to this opportunity if I had not been blessed by the support of every president who preceded me. There was a special group of past presidents who stood in for me when my work responsibilities caused me to miss four meetings. Thank you. The final quarter of this program year was certainly exceptional. This may very well be an understatement. When the club leaders were faced with a worldwide pandemic, we leaned into connecting our members in a virtual meeting room. Our attendance has remained strong, which is proof positive that our members deserve community, our desire, community and connection. We have learned to navigate these virtual gatherings with technology occasionally throwing us curveballs. However, we have maintained terrific programs, inducted new members, continued to ring the bell for SRF, and above all, we embrace change. Of course, this transition would not have been possible without the commitment of members who offered their technical assistance week to week. Thank you. Special thanks to my board of directors and to every one of our members who, actively, who are actively involved at the committee level. It was my intent to have the board liaisons work alongside of the committee chairs to bring recommendations to the board for potential action. As a result, our board, meet, our board agendas were action oriented and resulted in great outcomes. Every member who leans into a committee is functioning as a volunteer without compensation. Our club has so many facets where the talents of our members enrich weekly meetings and pave the way for our amazing future. In a club with so much history steeped in our own culture and traditions, I learned quickly that the best way to lead is to trust and encourage the efforts of the volunteers who serve at every level. Thank you, board members. Thank you, committee members. As I step into my role as immediate past president, I look forward to continuing at the committee level and taking on the role of the nominations committee chair. Thank you for trusting me to lead the club during our centennial year. Thank you for your constant words of encouragement and support throughout the year. Despite a pandemic, our numbers are strong because we have a deep culture of caring and connectedness. This culture has served us well for the past hundred years and I am confident that our club will endure for be well beyond the next hundred years as we continue to embrace peace, diversity, inclusion, community, global issues, and intentional connections. We are so much more than a club because every member matters. I love you, my friends. Thank you very much for this wonderful year. Back to you, Chuck. Yeah, am I unmuted? Thank you. Well, um, the first thing I'm supposed to do after this is acknowledge our outgoing um, club foundation or club and foundation officers and directors. And this is a pretty short list. Um, so first, Russ McCrack, an immediate past present who has been, in my opinion, very, very helpful he really dug in and stayed with us. We're going to miss his input. And then we're also losing off the Rotary Club board, Laura Agrero. And I believe that is the entire list. Um, and there are no uh, individuals leaving the Salem Rotary Foundation board. So to the two of you, thank you. We know you're retiring, but we're going to see you. Um, and we want you to stay involved, and certainly that is extremely encouraged uh, and important for all of us. Thank you for serving, both of you. Okay, we're moving to the new group. And um, first, we'll do the Rotary Club of Salem's one-year term officers. Um, Tammy could probably tell you, and Sue will be able to, one year's enough. <laughs> 
certain people in these officer groups don't listen very well. Uh, let me acknowledge, uh, new to the board, not really, but in a different position, immediate past president soon, Tammy Denny, president-elect, Mr. Mayor of Turner, Steve Horning, and then obviously Holly, who I could not live without, sorry Russ, <laughs> and I'm also returning as your treasurer. So that is your officers for next year. Now we have some new members to the board this year uh, for their first year of three. And the first is Brenna Bacham, and her role will be public image. The second is World Community Service, David Deckelman. And the third is Community Needs, Justin Tyler. Those are our um, new board members in, in the one year, or first year of a three year term. So we welcome you. And then to the Salem Rotary Foundation Board, the three year term, uh, our past president of our club, Russ McCracken, and Larry Connick. And for a uh, second three year term, so a re up, we have Barry Nelson. So these are your officers and incoming directors for the next rotary year, technically beginning July 1. And as an indication of fellow Rotarians' esteem and confidence in you, you have been elected as important leader positions in the administration of the Rotary Club of Salem and the Salem Rotary Foundation. We also believe we will uphold the traditions and interests of our club. You got 100 years to withhold now, uphold the objective of Rotary and the four way test. Um, with, will you fulfill the responsibilities of your club office to the best of your ability and in accordance with the Constitution and bylaws of this club, and also uphold and support your president elect, about to be president? And you acknowledge that if you would the number of people. Yes. I can't see you all, but I'm assuming you are. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> um, thank you. Welcome aboard. We appreciate it. I know you're all going to do a great job. So thank you again. Welcome aboard. All right. Now we're going to look at continuing board members for both Rotary Club of Salem and the Salem Rotary Foundation. So second year of three-year term, and it just, this is relatively new, the three-year term. This is either the first or second year, so a little bit. First, Good Works Director, Ryan Collier. Second, Fellowship Vocational, which is a now combined board position, uh, Claudia Vors, and always in the background, and I see him almost every morning, uh, Club Operations, Kelly White. To our third year of three-year term, so this is their last year, we have Membership Director, Robin Kerner, and New Generations Director, Farah Etzel. So that completes the Rotary Club of Salem Board. Now, Salem Rotary Foundation continuing board members. Jane Downing, Tim Nissen, Doug Parham, and Linda Wooters. And with that, I get to introduce, oh, thank you all for continuing. We appreciate your service and we're looking forward to another great year under President Sue. With that, I'm supposed to introduce President Sue. Um, she's there somewhere, I'm sure. Sue, you have been elected by the members of the Rotary Club to Salem to serve as its president. Congratulations. As an expression of our confidence, we have really entrusted in you, and you can see it's going to be a fun year. <laughs> <laughs> or should I use the word interesting? Um, 
It's an important responsibility. You're leading us into our second triple digit year, our 101st. And we look forward to dedication of our 100th year project. I'm going off script again. Um, our club future and guide us during this coming year. We're really looking forward to that. So, Sue, will you faithfully execute the office of president of the Rotary Club of Salem and to the best of your ability, abide by the district and Rotary international guidelines and uphold the constitution and bylaws of this club? I will. Fellow Rotarians and friends, do you promise to support the leadership of our club, our foundation, President Sue, and to encourage and support them and all of us through this challenging 2021 year? We do. We do. We do. We do. We do. Welcome. Thank you. So I hereby declare the new officers and directors installed and President Sue to receive her gavel as a symbol of the transfer of the administration of this club and leadership as well. May this be the best Rotary year ever, keeping us moving forward in 2020 and 21. You are now inducted, and somebody's supposed to ring one of the bells, because I don't have a bell. Thank you. Yeah. You're ringing your own bell. There we go. Thank you. All right. So, Sue, it's your turn to talk. And all righty. Have the stage. Thank you, Chuck. So, I want to start off um, by thanking past president Tammy. Um, thank you so much for your unwavering leadership over this last year, our centennial year. Your focus on governance and service above self, leading us through a challenging eight months as you. Um, challenging four months as you finished up your presidency. You guided us with grace, and many people have already said this to you today, Tammy, with grace, care, and humor um, as we entered into a truly unknown territory. I'll talk about this later, guys. Just, just um, bear with me. Um, care and humor as we entered into the truly unknown territory of the pandemic. You, you, you moved us into the virtual world, world seamlessly. I know you care deeply for all the members of our club and value the day that we can be together in person again as Rotarians. So thank you for your leadership, care, and commitment to our club and our community. So standing ovation for Tammy and all her service to the club. Uh, and thank you again, Chuck, for, um, for chairing our program. You, Chuck and I have known each other um, probably met 28 years ago when I first moved to town and, and got involved in the community. From day one, he's been my friend and supporter and somebody I know will speak the truth um, in his so eloquent and blunt way. Um, so expect the banter from the club's treasurer and president to continue wholeheartedly. So thank you, Chuck. Um, I want to start with, before I give you my thoughts about the coming year, I wanted to um, share some caveats with you as I take on this role. Um, first, um, you'll get to see many past presidents um, gaveling a meeting this year. My Boys and Girls Club Board of Directors meeting falls at this, this same time on Wednesdays, the fourth, fourth Wednesday of every month. So you'll have the pleasure of seeing a past president run our meetings. Uh, past presidents Tim and Barry have already graciously agreed to support me in the next two months. Over the past several years, um, it's come to pass that occasion occasionally as I speak to folks about the youth we serve and the impact the work we do at the Boys and Girls Club has in our community, I kind of do this. Um, I, I um, get this wave of emotions. <laughs> um, so guaranteed it's going to happen as we go through our meetings. Um, shouldn't be every time, so don't worry about it, um, because of the impact of the Rotary Club and what we do in our community. So again, not to worry, it typically I can compose myself pretty quickly, um, and it's from a good place in my heart for the work that we do. In addition to being a crier, I'm no good at jokes like past President Tom or Barry, but I hope to bring you words of wisdom from my kids from the club um, at our meetings as we go into the new year. So 
typically our incoming president will speak to what they've learned through the their um, their studies through the international conference and convey the year's focus and their personal vision to to you all. Um, to be honest, over the last several months, I've been focused on keeping my 100 plus employees on the payroll um, while we're closed, um, finding resources to serve meals to our kids. I promise this won't happen every time. Um, working with my peers across the state, advocating for our youth and focusing on understanding and acting on racial justice. On Monday, my organization opened and um, just opened again from March and is serving 60 kids a day. And that's in comparison to typically serving um, over 400 kids a day. So it's been a challenging, challenging several months. So I haven't, I'm making the excuse, I haven't had the time to hop on the virtual conven international convention sessions yet. I hope many of you have had that opportunity and um, I promise to view those recordings and learn. In the meantime, I dug into the Rotary International website and found themes that resonate with me deeply and aligns with my personal vision of our coming year and the values that I hold close as a human being. What I know is that we as Rotarians are people of action. We're a club that gets things done. Rotary is where neighbors, friends, and problem solvers share ideas, join leaders, and take action to create lasting change. Together as Rotarians, we see a world where people unite and take action to create that lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. As Rotarians, we're committed to taking action locally and globally. Each day, our members pour their passion, integrity, and intelligence into completing projects that have a lasting impact. We persevere until we deliver real lasting change. Like all of you, I so value the community we live in and wholeheartedly believe in Rotary's motto above, of service above self. We're undeniably in crazy and chaotic times in our world and in our community, which makes our role as Rotarians and our work even more imperative in serving our community. With so much uncertainty in our future, people are hurting in so many ways and looking for hope and real change. As a club, we can Im impact many of our community's challenges through our investments in time and treasure. I vow to listen and learn from our membership, committees, and board as we look at strategies to build resiliency in our community through our investments of time and service and financial investments to support causes in our community that will make a lasting difference. Tactically, we'll be surveying all of our members to listen and gain your input on a variety of components and functions of our club, including where you see our next investment in our community. With your feedback, our board of directors will take your responses into account as we review and update our strategic plan to align our values, interests, and energies into what is most important to our club and our community. And I will ensure and continue to provide an equity lens to our strategic work. Thank you all for your, your belief in me as a leader. I'm honored to serve you as we enter the next century of service in our community. I value you all and truly look forward to getting to know you better, each and every one of you. And uh, as we can continue our incredible and important work in our community. And as iterated by everyone else um, through this program, I can't wait till we're together and in person um, and that day will come. So with that, um, my first official act is to introduce our next program. And our next program will be fellowship uh, chaired by Claudia Voice. We're gonna be playing some virtual bingo. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I hope you will all join us. And <laughs> I can see Larry Gray is like, what the heck? Um, so I hope you'll all join us next and next Wednesday. And with that, um, the meeting's adjourned and I'm gonna ring the bell. <laughs>